Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. It's TPM5 here, back again with another NBA video. In today's video, I'll be talking about the Atlanta Hawks and why I believe they could have the NBA's next big dynasty. So without further ado, let's get started. Last season, the Atlanta Hawks had a 41-31 record, which was fifth in the Eastern Conference. They beat the Knicks. They surprisingly, or to many people, it was a surprise when they beat the Philadelphia 76ers. And then they ended up losing to the Milwaukee Bucks in the conference finals. But that achievement to get there was already, you know, something that they should take pride in. And I believe that they have a lot of pieces to build with in the future. Now, the addition of uh, coach Nate McMillan can't be understated as he led the team to a 27 and 11 record during his period of time uh, coaching at the end of the season. Uh, prior to that, Lloyd Pierce was at a 14 and 20 record. So I think. You know, Nate McMillan developed an ability to get the best out of this team offensively, which was something that you know Lloyd Pierce wasn't able to do. And I think that it was the right choice to get rid of a coach they had while they were rebuilding and look at a guy that has done stuff with other franchises as well. But obviously, no one would have expected him to do this well on the job. Now, the Atlanta Hawks have a very depthy roster. They have a lot of young, talented players, you know, signed for the future. But just a quick break, guys. Uh, I make NBA content two to three times a week. I've been making it almost daily, uh, you know, during the off season. So if you'd like to, you know, stick around for that, I'd appreciate it. I'm about to hit 600 subs, so if you want to join the journey, feel free to. And otherwise, yeah, don't forget to like and comment. And let's continue with the video. So last season, Trae Young was averaging 25 points and nine assists. Now he's still very young. Uh, you know, he's definitely in my, you know, in my eyes, a top 10 point guard. And he's only uh, around 22, I believe. So he's not even in his prime yet. And he was, you know, showing an ability to really run through the pick and roll, you know, really run plays and control the offense, uh, you know, averaging nine and a half assists as well. Uh, John Collins was averaging 18 points and seven rebounds. Throughout his time in the league, he's been a very steady option for them. He was drafted the year before they got Trey Young. He's averaged 17 points and eight rebounds on 57% shooting from the field. Uh, for his whole career. They did re-sign him to a rather team-friendly deal. I believe that deal was around 23.5 next year and then it goes up to 25.3 and then 26.5. So it goes up incrementally. Uh, he's a very good player for them. I think that he still has a lot of you know building to do and I like the Trey Young and you know, John Collins dynamic with the you know lob threat which can get some fans excited and all that stuff. Now as a duo they were averaging 43 points, 11.3 rebounds and also 10.6 assists. So those two guys still have a lot of improving to do. And I think that those two guys will be a key part of any future runs this Hawks team makes. Now onto another guy that gets overshadowed by those two. Clint Capella has re-signed to the team, you know, an extension for another two years, 46 million. Uh, last season, he was averaging 15 points, 14 rebounds. And, you know, he's a very good, you know, paint protector. He was averaging two blocks a night. He's one of the better rebounders in the league. He probably gets overshadowed, and he's still young, so he can grow with those two guys. You know, as a center, you know, he's pretty good. I think they've found their long-term center in him. Uh, probably, you know, one of the guys around him that can shoot, but he does his role, and he does what he needs to do well enough to the point where you can have him out there. And I'd like to see him probably develop a bit more versatility defending so we can avoid some Rudy Gobert situations in the future. And then we have uh, another... I think five players in the teens in terms of you know averages or at least you know in double figures so they have a good young core another guy that has some potential for the future is our uh, huerta now who's averaging you know 11 points three rebounds three assists uh, in the season that just went by and that was considered a down year for him now he can be that you know another shooting guy they can have another shooting wing and he's still very young as well he's picked up in the same draft class as trey young so i think that he can still improve and he's definitely going to be a key part of this team for the future and he would hold some trade value too if that was you know part of the conversation they also have forwards cam reddish deandre hunter and then also you know jalen johnson who they just picked up who can you know develop for them i liked uh deandre hunter's ability to score he was averaging 15 points and five rebounds in just under 30 minutes a night uh and then also Cam Reddish needs to develop a bit, but he's also doing well in the double figures in terms of points per game as well. Uh, you know, Onyeka Kongwu is another piece they have. So the thing is with this Hawks team, they have a lot of young guys due to the years they're at the basement of the league. But, you know, they have a lot of players that can develop and also have trade value. And they have a lot of trade, you know, contracts like Danilo Gallinari, Bogdan Bogdanovic, 
and then other guys like that who you know have you know as a cap filler and you can kind of make something up with that trade i think that the hawks are a destination for someone like you know brad bill or you know if someone like that was to become available i think they are definitely a destination and they're probably going to commit a lot of money in the future but you know they can you know they have they can go into the bird rights and go over the luxury tax for some of these young guys so just going to quickly go over the depth chart you have trey young at point guard kevin huerta at shooting guard john Dre hunter at small forward uh, john collins at power forward you have clint capella at the center spot then delon right off the bench which you know was a good pickup for them bogdan bogdanovich off the bench as well averaging 16 points which is pretty handy cam reddish and galnari at the forward spots and then gorgie deng and guys like Lou Williams, Solomon Hill, and Onyeko Kongu, who aren't even in that um, depth chart rotation, getting significant minutes. So this team, you know, can do things in the future. I believe they have a bright future ahead of them. I think they'll be a contender in the Eastern Conference for many years to come. And I think that they also are a destination for a blockbuster trade. And that brings me to the end of the video, guys. So please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.